All right, so let's talk about the first equimarginal principle. The first equimarginal principle is a great example of the role of mathematics in economics because the first equimarginal principle isn't really economics. It's, it's more just a mathematical principle, but it's an extremely important principle to a number of especially important economic concepts, um, namely supply and demand. Um, in the context of chapter two, the way in which the first equimarginal principle is framed is all around this example of how many uh, lake acres uh, we should allow to be used uh, for economic reasons. And the idea here is that if you allow lake acres to be used for economic reasons, um, there is both uh, economic benefits, but there are also environmental costs associated with that decision. And so from a social perspective, what we want to try to find is what is the optimal number of river acres to allow to be used for economic reasons. Now, obviously, this is a, a pretty common, uh, you know, sort of question that arises um, from an environmental perspective um, and, uh, you know, how much economic activity should we allow um, within natural resources like a lake? And oftentimes the way that this decision is made is we weigh the benefits and the costs, right? It goes back to this idea that optimal decisions are made by weighing the costs and benefits uh, and, and making decisions in which the benefits are, are greater than the costs. Or at the very least, the, the relationship between costs and benefits is uh, positive. Okay, so in this particular example, we can see that the total cost associated with allowing lake acres to be used uh, for economic reasons is captured by the uh, function total cost is equal to Q squared. So uh, where Q is lake acres, um, the total benefit of this is 100 Q minus Q squared. And the question of how many lake acres we should allow to be used could, could be answered simply by using these two, these two particular functions. We could uh, calculate um, the, the net benefits, that's benef total benefits minus total costs uh, associated with, with every um, additional lake acre uh, being allowed. And then we could simply see uh, which uh, number of lake acres maximizes net benefits. But we actually have a, a, a simpler... Um, quicker way, a more efficient way, which is nice, being that this is economics, we have a much more efficient way to, to get to that particular answer. And we're going to use the concept of thinking on the margin in order to do that. Up to this point, the way that we've, we've tended to think about on the margin is that it's about this sort of notion of incremental thinking. And, and it's supposed to improve decision making because you are uh, making the decision of whether I should do one more or one less of something in, in particular, right? So if I go to a store and I'm deciding how many gallons of milk that I need to buy for that particular week, obviously I am thinking about, uh, do I need this one gallon of milk? And if I, and if I perceive that I do need it and assuming that I can afford it, then of course I, I stick that in, into my bag. And then if I say, well, you know what, I really need two gallons of milk, then I put a second gallon of milk in my car. Like that's kind of thinking on the margin, thinking incrementally. Um, but we can actually think on the margin um, from a mathematical perspective and, and, and get to the decision of what is the optimal number a lot quicker. So just below the, the total cost and total benefit functions, you'll also see marginal cost and marginal benefit functions. Now, those of you with a calculus background, you'll notice that marginal cost and marginal benefit here are just the, the derivatives of total cost and total benefit with respect to Q. So, um, yeah, like I said, if you have that calculus background, then you probably see that these are just derivatives. Um, if you don't have a calculus background, it's, it's really not a concern at all. Um, marginal cost is equal to 2Q and marginal benefit is equal to 100 minus um, 2Q. And so these are actually going to be the functions that we use uh, to find the what is optimal. Okay, so so how does the first equimarginal principle work? Um, well, this is a figure which looks at net benefits relative to Q. 
And we can see that as Q increases, the net benefits rise for a, a time period. And then eventually, once we get to Q star, um, we see that net benefits have peaked and in fact now are declining. Um, what this means is that the decision, the optimal decision is going to be made where net benefits are maximized. Now that's pretty straightforward. Um, we want to maximize uh, benefits related to costs. Um, this relates um, to profits uh, from uh, producers and firms who want to maximize profits. They want to maximize the net benefits of their business, where revenues are their benefits and costs are their costs, and so net benefits are profits. Um, when you go to a store, you value products for a particular amount, and then those products have prices. Um, oftentimes, we actually buy products where we have a higher value than what we pay for the product. So when you go to a store, what you're doing is you're trying to maximize the added value that you have when you buy products. Um, and so it's really a similar situation here. So then the goal, the optimal um, goal is going to be where Q star is. We want to be able to find Q star. Okay, um, and again, we're going to be able to use these functions uh, in order in order to find Q star. So what we're going to do now is instead of looking at this from the perspective of net benefits, because here we can see that there's a Q star, but it doesn't really tell us like where Q star is. Okay, but what I want you to do is look at the slope of net benefits. Right, you'll notice that net benefits uh, start out with a very steep slope. Um, that means that net benefits are increasing uh, a lot in early um, amounts of Q. So when we're over here, we can see that net benefits are really uh, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But then over time, we can see that the speed at which net benefits are getting bigger is starting to slow down, right? So we say that net benefits are increasing at a decreasing rate, okay, diminishing marginal returns. And so the more and more lake acres that we allow to be used um, for economic reasons, uh, the benefits rise at the beginning, but over time, the speed at which those benefits are rising um, starts to fall, right? So increasing at a decreasing rate right right we call this the inverted u right an inverted u increases but it increases at a decreasing rate so the slope of this line is marginal net benefit right this is a net benefit curve uh, therefore the slope of this line is what we're going to refer to as marginal net benefit well marginal net benefit is just marginal benefits minus marginal cost okay and so if we just think about every time we use an additional lake acre, there is an amount of benefit that is generated, that's the marginal benefit, and there is an amount of cost generated, and that's the marginal cost, okay? Early on, when we just start allowing lake acres to be used, the first few lake acres to be used, the marginal benefits are much larger than the marginal costs, and as a result, net benefits are rising. But then, as we use more and more lake acres for economic reasons, the marginal benefits and marginal costs start to converge towards each other. And so, therefore, net benefits starts to get smaller in terms of change and eventually declines. So the question is, where is the peak? Where is this particular peak? Well, if, if the slope of this line represents marginal net benefit, and if marginal net benefit is marginal benefits minus marginal costs, then this means that the peak of this curve occurs where marginal net benefit is zero, right? Where the slope of this line is exactly zero. We can see that prior to Q star, the slope of this line is greater than zero. And we can see that after Q star, the slope of this line is less than zero. So what we want to find is the amount of lake acres for which the slope of the net benefit line, marginal net benefit, is equal to zero. Well, if marginal net benefit is marginal benefit minus marginal cost, the only place where that will be zero is where marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. So the first equimarginal principle says 
that net benefits will be maximized when marginal benefit equals marginal cost. That's why we refer to it as the equa marginal principle. Again, I'll say it again. Net benefits of any activity will be maximized when the marginal benefits of that activity are equal to the marginal cost of that activity. This is the first equa marginal principle. If we look at this graph, we can actually see this a little bit more in action. So notice when we're at zero. So imagine we're not allowing any of the lake to be used for economic reasons. So we're at zero. Notice that marginal benefit is 100 and marginal cost is zero. So marginal benefit is much larger than marginal cost. And so marginal net benefit is very large, right? And again, that coincides with this very steep part of the net benefit curve. Then as we increase lake acres being used for economic reasons, you'll notice that marginal benefits are falling and marginal costs are rising, meaning that marginal benefits and marginal cost converge towards each other as we increase Q. The point at which we've achieved Q star, or the optimal number of lake acres to be used uh, for economic reasons, will again occur when marginal cost is equal to marginal benefit. And uh, that is the first equimarginal principle. So whether you look at this from this perspective, all right, we're trying to find the peak of the net benefit curve. All we have to know is that we're looking for the slope of this curve to be zero. And since the slope of this curve is marginal net benefit, it's simply where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. And then if we look at this graph, again, we can see that uh, we're simply going to keep using lake acres for economic reasons until the marginal benefit equals marginal cost, because if we weren't, um, in a sense, we would be leaving benefits on the table. So imagine for a moment that we were using like uh, half of Q star for economic reasons, somewhere like right here, right? You'll notice that marginal benefit is considerably greater than marginal cost, meaning that if we use one more lake acre, uh, a marginal increase in lake acres being used for economic reasons, um, we will gain more benefit than we pay in cost. So it's rational for us to allow an additional lake acre to be used. This logic holds until we get to Q star, because it is at Q star where if we use one more acre than Q star for economic reasons, we can see now the costs that we pay are greater than the benefits that we would receive, and so therefore we would lose uh, money or lose uh, out uh, if we actually went beyond Q star. So the first equimarginal principle just allows us to get to the solution of what is the optimal number of a particular activity a lot quicker than if we simply looked at this from the perspective of total benefits and total cost. And again, the idea here is that this illustrates the, the fundamental power of thinking on the margin, which is...